happiness is a side effect of meaning. Therefore, take no thought for the moral, for the moral shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. I spent a long time trying to figure out what that meant too, because it's another one of those lines that can easily be read as pro grasshopper and anti ant. Remember the old fable of the grasshopper and the ant? Maybe not. I'm not going to tell it, but the ant works and the grasshopper fiddles. The ant has a pretty good time in the winter and the grasshopper dies. And so this is like a pro grasshopper line, but it's not. It says something else. It says that if you orient yourself properly and then pay attention to what you do every day, that works. That works. That works. That works. And you can live in the day. You're a creature that has a name. You have to have a name. That makes every moment supercharged with meaning. Live in the day. You're a creature that has a name. You have to have a name. That makes every moment supercharged with meaning. The world shifts itself around your aim. You're a creature that has a name. You have to have a name in order to do something. You're an aiming creature. You look at a point and you move towards it. It's built right into you. And so you have an aim. Well, let's say your aim is the highest possible aim. That sets up the world around you. It organizes all of your perception, what you see and you don't see, your emotions and your motivation. So you organize yourself around that aim. And then what happens? The day manifests itself as a set of challenges and problems. And if you solve them properly, you stay on the pathway towards that aim. And you can concentrate on the day. And so that way, you get to have your cake and eat it too. Because you can point into the distance, the far distance. Point into the distance, the far distance. And you can live in the day. You're a creature that has a name. You have to have a name. That makes every moment supercharged with meaning. Live in the day. You're a creature that has a name. You have to have a name. That makes every moment supercharged with meaning. If everything that you're doing is related to the highest possible aim that you can conceptualize, well, that's the very definition of the meaning that would sustain you in your life. Well, and then the issue is back to Noah. Well, all hell's about to break loose and chaos is coming. It's like when that's happening in your life, you might want to be doing something that you regard as truly worthwhile. Because that's what will keep you afloat when everything is flooded. And you don't want to wait until the flood comes to start doing that. Because if your ark's half built and you don't know how to captain it, the probability is very high that you'll drown.
That's to say, people who are interesting are people who are interested. Any person, for example, who is constantly thinking about all sorts of other things and other people and so on, because they're fascinating, becomes a fascinating person. But a person who doesn't think about anybody else and who's got very little going on inside their skull is boring. So in other words, your engagement with the external world, the more you are involved, the more your personality is enriched. Do things that are delightful to you. Do things that are delightful to you. Do things that are delightful to you. You become thereby delightful to others. Do, do things that are delightful to you. Do things that are delightful to you. Do things that are delightful to you. You become thereby delightful to others. But if you try to enrich your personality by taking a course in how to win friends and influence people, or how to be a real person, you'll become just a washout. You'll be like somebody who tried to get a good nutrition by biting his nails, and then the fingers next, you know, and then half an arm gone and so on. You're entirely nourishing yourself with yourself. Now, of course, on a vast scale, the universe does that. It eats itself up. That's why the symbol of the snake swallowing its tail is a very fundamental, archaic symbol of life. But the way it's done is that the snake has in some part of the ring a place where it's not sensitive, it's called the unconscious. Where it doesn't know that what comes to it in the form of food is actually what left it in the form of excrement. That thing is... Don't mention it. After all, as the Lord said at the beginning of the universe, you must draw the line somewhere. Do things that are delightful to you. Do things that are delightful to you. Do things that are delightful to you. You become thereby delightful to others. Do, do things that are delightful to you. Do things that are delightful to you. Do things that are delightful to you. You become thereby delightful to others. Civilization. If you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for it, work day and night for it, give up your time and your peace and your sleep for it. If only desire of it makes you quite mad enough, never to tire of it. If only desire of it makes you quite mad enough, never to tire of it. You hold all other things to dream and you cheat for it. Hold all other things to dream and you cheat for it. If life seems all empty and useless without it, and all that you scheme and you dream is about it. If gladly you'll sweat for it, fret for it, plan for it, lose all your terror of God or of man for it. If you want to think bad enough to go out. If dogged and grim you besieging the set If dogged and grim you besieging the set 
besieging the side If y'all get in when you besieging the side You'll get it If you want it I wish that there was some weird genie that could take us back into time so that every one of you could live one fucking day in your great great grandparents' shoes and understand how fucking good you have it. Like if you really, really understood I'm not naive to what's happening in our society. Let me just say this very clear so everybody gets it through their fucking dome. This is the greatest year to ever be alive in the history of mankind. This is the greatest year to ever be alive in the history of mankind. This is the best. This is the best. The greatest year to ever be alive in the history of mankind. Fascinated by this. Fascinated by fucking mindset. It's a binary decision if you're going to be positive or negative about shit. When you bet on optimism, when you're on the offense, when you are playing towards intangibles, you do something super duper interesting. You start suffocating excuses. If you ask me what the number one thing is that I'm thankful for that my parents gave me, taking me from a communist country and moving me to the US, parenting me well, roof and clothes. If you ask me the number one thing I wake up every morning and thank that my parents did, is I never saw either one of them complain about jack shit. And it basically created learned behavior for me. I am incapable of actually complaining about shit. This is the greatest year to ever be alive in the history of mankind. This is the greatest year to ever be alive in the history of mankind. This is the best. This is the best. The greatest year to ever be alive in the history of mankind. This is the best. We have it the best. And all I see is people sitting around dwelling around dumb shit, what they don't have, instead of focusing on what they do have. The internet is a fucking miracle. It's a fucking miracle. The internet is a fucking miracle. It's a fucking miracle. There was no side hustle for your great grandparents. When it was 9 p.m., it was dark and cold outside. We just get used to shit so fast. And in our speed of 
getting used to how fucking awesome it is. I'm just desperate for you to not lose perspective. This is the greatest year to ever be alive in the history of mankind. This is the greatest year to ever be alive in the history of mankind. This is the best. post-World War II, their communism put them both in jail for 10 years in Siberia. Like, just think about that. Timing. Opportunity. Yes. Life is binary. It's either offense or defense. You are either sitting in your seat right now on the offense, or you're not. There is no fucking half-pregnant, there's no in-between. You're either this or that. You know, when people think of the word mind control, they think of controlling other people's minds. And when I think about mind control, I think about controlling your own mind. Because while I am obviously a physical person and I embrace physicality,
your mind control you. Control your mind. And once you control your mind, then you can set it free. Hi, it's David Hasselhoff, alias The Hoff. You're listening to Akira the Dawn. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Now, you see, if you do that, you do at least give yourself a chance. And it may be that when you are in this way freed from busybodiness and being out to improve everything, that your own nature will begin to take care of itself. You're not getting in the way of yourself all the time. You will begin to find out the great things that you are really happening. The great things that you are really happening. For example, no great genius can explain how he does what he does. The great things that you do are really happening. Yes, he says, I have learned a technique to express myself. Because I had something in me that had to come out. If I were a musician, I had to learn how music is produced. If I want to describe something, I have to learn a language so that others can understand it. I need a technique. But then beyond that, I'm afraid I can't tell you how it was that I used that technique to express this mysterious thing I wanted to show you. If we could tell people, we would have schools where we would infallibly train musical geniuses, scientific, miracle minds. And there would be so many of them, we, we wouldn't know what to do with them. Geniuses would be a dime a dozen. And then we would say, well, these people are, after all, not very ingenious. You know, PhDs, how many of them are there? Because what is fascinating always about genius is the fellow does something we can't understand. He surprises us. The great thing is that you are really happy. Just in the same way, we cannot understand our own brains. Neurology knows relatively little about the brain, which is only to say that the brain is a lot smarter than neurology. Yet there is this, which can perform all these extraordinary intellectual and cultural miracles. We don't know how we do, but we did. We didn't have some campaign to have an improved brain over the monkeys or whatever may be our ancestors. It happened. And all growth, you see, is fundamentally something that happens. But for it to happen, two things are important. And the first is, as I said, you must have the technical ability to express what happens. Secondly, you must get out of your own way. The great things that you do are really happening. The great things that you do are really happening. For example, no great genius can explain how he does it. The great things that you do are really happening. 
get out of my own way. If I showed you a system, let's all practice getting out of our own way. It would turn into another form of self-improvement. See, here's the dynamics of this. And we find this problem, you see, repeatedly throughout the entire history of human spirituality. In the phraseology of Zen Buddhism, you cannot get this by thinking. You cannot attain to it by not thinking. As getting out of your own way ceases to be a matter of choice, when you see that there's nothing else for you to do. When you see, in other words, that doing something about your situation is not going to help you. When you see equally that trying not to do anything about it is not going to help you. Where are you? Where do you stand? You're nonplussed. And you are simply reduced to watching, watching, watching. Yo, check it out, it's Raycorn the Chef, rockin' with a care of the dawn, you heard? You know what it is, man. All real shit, Ray, 100, 100. driven by the ugliest, most inconsiderate and aggressive drivers. And I can think about how our children's children will despise us for wasting all the future's fuel and probably screwing up the climate, and how spoiled and stupid and selfish and disgusting we all are, and how modern consumer society just sucks, and so on and so forth. You get the idea. If I choose to think this way in the store and on the freeway, fine. Lots of us do. Except thinking this way tends to be so easy and automatic that it doesn't have to be a choice. It is my natural default setting. It's the automatic way that I experience the boring, frustrating, crowded parts of adult life when I'm operating on the automatic, unconscious belief that I am the center of the world and that my immediate needs and feelings are what should determine the world's priorities. The thing is that, of course, there are totally different ways to think about these kinds of situations. In this traffic, all these vehicles stuck and idling in my way, it's not impossible that some of these people in SUVs have been in horrible auto accidents in the past and now find driving so terrifying that their therapist has all but ordered them to get a huge heavy SUV so they can feel safe enough to drive. Or that the Hummer that just cut me off is maybe being driven by a father whose little child is hurt or sick in the seat next to him and he's trying to get this kid to the hospital. And he's in a way bigger, more legitimate hurry than I am. It is actually I who am in his way. Or I can choose to force myself to consider the likelihood that everyone else in the supermarket's checkout line is just as bored and frustrated as I am. And that some of these people probably have much harder, more tedious or painful lives than I do. Again, please don't think I'm giving you moral advice or that I'm saying you're supposed to think this way or that anyone expects you to just automatically do it. Because it's hard. It takes will and effort. Do it. Because it's hard. It takes will and effort. And if you were like me, some days you won't be able to do it, or you just flat out won't want to. But most days, if you're aware enough to give yourself a choice, you can choose to look differently at this fat, dead-eyed, over-made-up lady who just screamed at her kid in the checkout line. Maybe she's not usually like this. Maybe she's been up 
three straight nights holding the hand of her husband who's dying of bone cancer. Or maybe this very lady is the low-wage clerk at the motor vehicles department who just yesterday helped your spouse resolve a horrific, infuriating red tape problem through some small act of bureaucratic kindness. Of course, none of this is likely, but it's also not impossible. It just depends what you want to consider. If you're automatically sure that you know what reality is and who and what is really important, if you want to operate on your default setting, then you, like me, probably won't consider possibilities that aren't annoying and miserable. And miserable. But if you really learn how to think how to pay attention, then you will know you have other options. Do it. Because it's hard. It takes will and effort. Do it. Because it's hard. It takes will and effort. It will actually be within your power to experience a crowded, hot, slow, consumer hell type situation as not only meaningful, but sacred. on fire with the same force that lit the stars. Love, fellowship, the mystical oneness of all things deep down. On fire with the same force that lit the stars. Love, fellowship, the mystical oneness of all things deep down. Not that that mystical stuff's necessarily true, the only thing that's capital T true is that you get to decide how you're going to try to see it. On fire with the same force that lit the stars. The mystical oneness of all things deep down. On fire with the same force that lit the stars. Love, fellowship, the mystical oneness of all things deep down. Write down things you want to improve. Write down things. 
things you won't tolerate from yourself. Write down things that you've done in the past that you never want to see yourself do again. And go forth from here as the hero of your own movie. As, as the hero of your own movie. You have to be the hero of your own story. You have to be the hero of your own story. You have to be the hero of your own story. You have to be the hero of your own story. Build momentum. Build confidence and momentum with each good decision that you make from here on out. You can do it. You can do it. Anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. We live in unique times. We live in one of the rarest times in human history where you can choose almost all of the input that comes your way. Whether it's the movies that you watch, the books you read, the podcasts you listen to, you can choose to be inspired. Do that. Do that. Do, do, do that. Do, 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 do that. Do that. Be the hero. Be the hero. Be, 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 be the hero. Of your own movie. You have to be the hero of your own story. You have to be the hero of your own story. You have to be the hero of your own story. You have to be the hero of your own story. And you can do that. you a fucking genius about who the fuck you are. And then from there, once you realize 3.14 is pi, you can solve any fucking equation in the world. That's what it's about. Meaningwave.com Because happiness is a side effect of meaning. Akira. There's 
so much knowledge out there, so much information, so many ways to get better. And we make, we make so many mistakes. We're the product of our mistakes. And oftentimes the lesson is sitting there right in front of our face. It's there to be learned, but we miss it or we don't pay attention to it or we think we know better until it punches us in the face. And the most important thing to learn is that we have so much to learn. We all do. And we can learn from school and people and from experience and we learn from life. You get one shot, one shot at this gig right here. Life, one life, that's all you got. One life, one shot. But you have to process the information. You have to absorb it. You have to accept it. You have to open your mind. You gotta free your mind so that you can learn and make, make, make real progress. And as far as regrets and things I wish I would have done differently, of course. Hindsight, hindsight, hindsight is 2020. And looking back, of course, who wouldn't want to take another go at something and improve on the first try by doing it again? And then why not do it again and again and again? Why not do it over and over again until you have it perfect? But the fact is, you don't get that chance. You get one shot, one shot at this gig right here. Life, one life, that's all you got. One life, one shot and regret. In and of itself, it's worthless. It does nothing for you. In fact, the only valuable thing in regret is the lesson you learned, the knowledge that you gained. But walking around filled with regret gets you nothing. So learn and move on. Don't let regret beat you down. Don't be a slave to regret. No, no, no. Let it teach you. Let it make you better. Let the fear of regret fuel you to take action. Today. Now. Now. You get one shot. One shot at this game right here. Life. One life. That's all you got. One life. Achieve your potential in this lifetime.